A couple days ago, I made a video asking you guys what the one question you would ask to a patient with elevated LFTs was in order to cinch the diagnosis. And I was very pleased because a lot of you guys actually took the time to respond. So thank you guys for doing that. And I just want to open it up and check out some of your guys' responses to that video. Stick around because in the end, I'm going to tell you what we eventually did diagnose this patient with. The Macbeth man says, I'm thinking ischemic hepatitis. Questions would be how much has he vomited? Is he tender in the right upper quadrant area? Cool extremities, palpitations, or feeling weak or fatigue, and also low urine output. Awesome question, the Macbeth man. You know, a lot of the questions that you guys asked are really getting into uh, this concept of LFTs elevated to the thousands, which uh, for me, I have a differential. Uh, it's called VAID, V-A-I-D. That's just basically something I learned in medical school because one of our doctors, basically professors, was Dr. VAID, and that was basically a differential for LFTs in the thousands. So viral hepatitis or viral causes of uh, transaminitis, autoimmune hepatitis, ischemic or shock liver, and drug-induced liver injury. There are some other causes as well, but I think those ones really uh, encapture the greatest subset of patients with LFTs in the thousands. Very much most commonly it's going to be drug-induced liver injury, um, but then ischemic hepatitis and viral are very common as well. Autoimmune hepatitis is going to be more rare, but actually last week we did have a patient with autoimmune hepatitis, uh, so it does definitely happen as well. Definitely get those anti-smooth muscle antibodies, you guys. All right, going back to the Macbeth man, uh, the vomiting was uh, not that significant. I think he had a couple episodes of vomiting. No tenderness in the right upper quadrant. He did have some cold extremities, but was not grossly volume overloaded or anything in terms of his uh, heart failure. No palpitations. He is feeling weak. Um, and then he did not have low urine output. It seemed about normal. Diego Gutierrez says, has your medicine intake changed? Did you forget to take a medicine and take several at once to compensate? Acute drug-induced hepatitis comes to mind. No changes to his medicine intake. Jason says, thinking ischemic hepatitis, has he been adherent to his medications? Yes, he has. And great Scott, how much aspirin did you take? Sounds like Dilly. Doubt it's hepatitis, but I'm eager, eager to know what it is. Was a fan of your SE2 days. Glad you're making a real difference out there. I became an RDN after gaming. Good luck, Suppy. Oh, thank you, Matthew Lobo. Vezer, hey, good to see you, man. Alcohol intake. He does not drink alcohol, actually. Good question, though. And Atlantic bouldering here asking any over-the-counter supplements or medications recently. When you ask him about any new medications recently, he says no. But then the question that we went and asked the patient, which is pretty similar to what you were getting at, is we went back and asked him, have you been taking any new herbal medications recently? And to this, he said, yes, he has. Two weeks ago, he started this herbal tea extract called Moringa Leaf which apparently is a very common supplement or um, tea that people take. Apparently it's supposed to be liver protective. But what we found out when we talked to pharmacy, uh, because we had high suspicion that this might've been involved, was that it's a CYP450 inhibitor and so several of the medications that he was on, such as atorvastatin, may have been rising to uh, more toxic levels. So we thought maybe with CYP450 inhibition, his atorvastatin was causing hepato hepatotoxicity. And that was our thought process. So that was the one question that we asked him uh, that really changed how we thought uh, his diagnosis was. And that was asking if he was taking any herbal medications. Another good one to ask is, are they, are they eating any like wild mushrooms or anything? Asking some of these more esoteric questions can actually be very, very revealing. Are they changing their medication? They may not actually tell you uh, unless you specifically ask for any new herbal medications. So the story doesn't end yet though. The next part was that we stopped him from taking this Moringa leaf tea extract. Obviously he was in the hospital. And we also stopped his atorvastatin. We stopped some other things that could have potentially caused hepatotoxicity. You know, we thought his allopurinol could have potentially caused some damage as well. And his LFTs went from 1800 down to 1200 down to 400. And we're like, okay, great. We are getting ready to discharge this guy. We nailed the diagnosis. Uh, we think this is pretty clear and it's gonna get better. All of a sudden though, he uh, started to get a um, uptrend in his LFTs on the day that we were about to discharge him. Went up from 400 to 600, and then the next day it was 3,500. Oh crap, we, we missed the diagnosis. Like we did something wrong. And, and to be fair, I, I don't know if we totally missed the diagnosis or you know we had the right diagnosis, but then something changed. 
But at this point, GI was consulted. We had them following and they were starting to talk about, hey, this patient's extremities are really cold. He's not fluid overloaded. This is, this is the thing that was crazy for me. His blood pressures were always fine. Um, 100s, 110s systolic, maybe dropped a little bit lower to the 90s at one point, but never a soup, like hypotensive picture. Um, he's like mentating fine. He's using his walker and he's just like kind of chilling in bed. He just has a little bit of epigastric abdominal pain, no edema, no shortness of breath. His heart failure is stable. And yet he's got these cold extremities. And so GI at this point said they're concerned for cardiogenic shock and ischemic hepatitis, which was the other diagnosis that you guys were talking about. So I was very surprised that this person might have been in cardiogenic shock when they otherwise looked so clinically stable. Besides his liver function, his kidneys also started getting worse. His creatinine initially had an AKI. It improved when we stopped all the Moringa leaf tea and then started getting really bad again. And then his urine output started going down. So then it really started to seem cardiogenic shock. He got upgraded to the ICU for a Bumex strip as well as dobutamine. Uh, funnily enough, you know, we checked his IVC too and it wasn't that overloaded. So I, I don't know where all his volume was. I, I knew he had some in his, his belly, but you know, his IVC did not look that dilated. I know it's not the most reliable exam, but they started all these things for him. His urine output started picking up again. His LFTs have now been consistently downtrending down to the thousands. And then I think today was, was about 800 or so. And uh, everything seems to improve, be improving. So really it was cardiogenic shock with ischemic hepatitis. The only thing I'm not clear about is, was that initial insult cardiogenic shock? I don't know. It's a case that's still interesting to me. I'm still going to keep following to figure out what exactly happens to this patient. Um, you know, it was a point where he had his code status changed in case he got clinically a lot worse. Uh, this is like a very um, intense hospitalization for him. And I'm curious to see how things trend down over time and what the official diagnosis is in the end. Was this all spurred on by this new Moringa leaf tea extract two weeks ago, which caused liver injury? And then eventually when he got hospitalized, he got some fluids at some point uh, and that precipitated cardiogenic shock. Or was this cardiogenic shock with ischemic hepatitis the whole time? I know it's difficult for you guys because you guys have limited information. Uh, but if you guys have any thoughts about this case, let me know in the comments down below. I can definitely look up more information about kind of what happened to him. But I think he was a really great learning case, a very interesting patient overall, and now seems to be doing better, which I'm very happy happy with because this guy is super great. Hope you guys enjoyed that video and thank you guys for commenting. Check out this next video over here which YouTube is recommending to you guys and let me know if they recommended a good video for you guys and please leave in the comments below your thoughts about the case and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much.